Hey guys. So, um, I have the straps put on and to stabilize the greaves onto the foot very much like how I had the hair tie coming around as a finger ring, um, on my center finger on the bracers, I'm going to be putting two, uh, eyelets on each side of this greave here. I'm going to be doing this to both of them. Now, normally you could get away with, you know, you'd think you could get away with just punching a hole, but this is going to have a lot of stress put on it. So I'm actually going to be using, if I can pull that out to show you real quick. Um, some eyelets. Oh, where's my anvil at? Come here. No problem. Okay, and I'm using quarter inch eyelets because I'm going to be attaching it with chain mail. But you basically, it's a little metal insert that you put through the hole. You have this anvil that it sets in, that keeps a nice smooth surface. And then you have this driver that, I mean, um, you put it through the hole of the leather face down, you know, because you want the uh, nice, pretty finished side of the leather showing. And then you take your driver and position it. Hold everything secure, make sure it's all lined up. And then you just smack the crap out of it with your hammer. <laughs> and it makes a very nice, neat, professional lined hole that's a lot less likely to rip out. And then I'm going to be using 16 gauge quarter inch steel rings to attach a hair tie. But I'll do that in a minute. For now, I'm going to finish up. This is so exciting, you guys. Because the next step is just putting the, uh, the veneer on that front decorative panel. And with them being quarter inch eyelets, I'm using a quarter inch hole punch. Put that away. Okay, so now I'm going to set this aside. Our next step, actually, I'll keep it over here so I can show you, is going to be to attach I'm going to be attaching this front panel that's purely decorative but awesome um, on top of the greave like this. So I need to determine where I'm going to be putting my holes that uh, it's going to be lining up to punch through the base layer. Like where are my rivets going to be? And so I'm feeling actually think something that might be better you know for accomplishing is to first to make sure that I have the right front panel lined up with the correct under panel and this one is correct it's because of the way that the arch follows along and I think I'm going to I think I'm going to punch the holes in the base layer first. Getting out the big cutting board for this. The 
because I know I'm going to want probably three rivets. on each side. Okay. So there, that is punched. And so now, I can kind of line it up on the back. And I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to mark There's a spot. This looks like they're in there. And again, just like with the uh, bracer, making sure that the dots are the same distance apart. But if you want the design shifted a bit, which I think I do want it shifted just a hair this away. In which case. Punch. And punch. And I'm doing it on the uh, outside edge of where the hole is or where the mark is, because since it's going to be bending around, this is actually taking up more space than the layer underneath it. Like, it's going to be longer. Like a, if you have a difficult time with the concept, just think of uh, Russian dolls. How, um, you know, one fits inside the other, but, you know, the smaller one goes inside the other, so to fit this... I keep magnets around. Just put a magnet on the end of the ruler. Y'all have no idea how often I do this. That's why I always recommend do not live like I do with a messy, messy craft room. It'll cost you mucho lots and headache. Mucho ultra lots. Come here. Yeah, I think I got them all, but yeah, check it. <laughs> I was able to reach into all the weird little places. I didn't pick up any dog fur with it. And then I just removed the magnet. Actually, hell, I think I'm going to leave the magnet in there. <laughs> but yeah, Russian dolls. So, like, this way, um, this outer layer needs to be slightly bigger than the greave that it's going over like the structural piece underneath it. That way the under piece won't buckle funny whenever it's on. Truly hope that that makes sense. Once it gets to a certain point, I stop using the wing divider. It's just easier to just find a ruler. 14 centimeters. So there's this dot. So the other one is going to be right there. It is. So if I move over. Bye. Okay. 
Okay, those actually look like pretty great spots to have the holes. I think I might need to use some medium, or at least just the regular small rivets for this one, make sure it's thick enough. And these ones are 3 eighths of an inch long. I'm going to load it through the back on one side. This is like, <laughs> um, n not precarious, but definitely a moment. Like this is, I'm about to see how this is actually going to come together. And literally everything that I just put in there fell out. And now I've got the little bristle brush here. I'm going to make sure one last time that it's nice and brushed because this is kind of my last opportunity to brush this out like good and thorough. Because once I have the veneer on there, it's, it's going to be on there. I'll be able to brush it from the back side, yeah, but not from the front like this. through putting the rivet cap on got my rivet driver got my hammer and it's in it's in y'all okay next rivet is lined up is through the rivet cap is on got my driver Got my hammer. And it's through. Third rivet. Is through. Cap is on. Driver, hammer. And it's on there. Oh, it's on there. <laughs> So I'm turning it. Oh, this is so exciting. Randy, mm. I'm excited. Right. Y'all can't tell, but Randy's excited too. <laughs> Getting in there for one last good sweep. Here, brush. Okay, coming in through the back. Now this one, I think I'm actually gonna have to get in there because I come up on the uh, side, that way I can bend it with the same curve that it's going to be in naturally whenever it's being worn. Put the cap on. Got my driver. And it's set. Coming in from the bottom with rivet number two for this side. Setting it down. My work surface. Got my rivet cap. Got my 
dryer. And it's on there. Okay. Last one, y'all. Lined up. Got myself a rivet top. And it's set. It's got that very slight curve in it, if you'll see. But that keeps it that whenever it bends around, it's not puckering funny in the middle. If we had done it where it was just exactly the same length, this one would have buckled just a little bit. And that's, that's no good. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Now I'm cinching it down just to see what it looks like, you know, curved. Love those little spots on the ends. I think I may actually make or add on of some sort uh, some little belt keepers. just so that this extra little bit is actually held down. Check that out, you guys. And that's it with the uh, fur slicked back. We can also do it with the fur brushed forward to where it makes a little bit more of a shield effect. I really like that too. That is just so cool. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go do this to the other side, and then uh, we're going to make the rabbit fur underlayer. For, to hide the rest of the boot in the back and uh, I'll see you guys back here <laughs> 